In this recording, we will practice some questions from module five and module six of the PeopleSearch Scrum One certification course. Module five, Scrum events. There'll be several questions in the exam from this module, as many as 12. So let's practice a good number of questions. Number 24. In total, there are four events that are part of the overall sprint in Scrum. Three of these are sprint planning, daily scrum, and sprint retrospective. Which of the following best represents the fourth event? Release planning, backlog refinement, sprint review, or sprint execution? Release planning is not a formal Scrum event. It may or may not be performed. Backlog refinement is an activity performed commonly, but it is again not a formal Scrum event. Sprint execution, though it appears like a formal event, it is not. Sprint review is the only formal event. Though sprint execution is critical, but it is for the execution that other events occur before and after the execution. If you look at the picture of the Scrum framework, you will see that the sprint execution is shown in a slightly different color. And you refer back to a previous module about the sprint execution. It has been mentioned that it's not a formal event, though you can call it as an event as such. Number 25, which two of the following best represents benefits of the sprint review event in Scrum? One, risks and issues can be identified. Two, the sizing of user stories is more accurate. Three, feedback for adaptation is gathered. Four, the developers learn from one another. Note that the question is about the sprint review. Option A, two and four, or B, one and two, or C, one and three, or D, three and four. A sprint review is for the product. Keeping that in mind, two should be ignored. And therefore, it cannot be A or B. Because the sizing of user stories is not done at the sprint review. So which means it could be one, three, or four. Four is possible, the developers learning from each other in the sprint review. Or it may not be possible. The developers learn from each other more during the sprint execution, during the sprint planning, and the sprint retrospective and execution rather than uh, the sprint review. Therefore, two and four are ruled out. One, risks and issues can be identified, and three, feedback for adaptation is gathered. Adapting the product, that is. So therefore, the correct answer would be C, one and three. So once again, number two, sizing of user stories is not performed at the review. And developers do not learn from one another during the review because it's a review by the customer and feedback is obtained from them. Number 26, which two of the following best describe what happens during a sprint retrospective? One, the team inspects the effectiveness of its interactions and processes. Two, increment adaptations are identified and documented. Three, velocity is calculated to determine if it can be increased. Four, assumptions that cost customer dissatisfaction are discussed. The question is about the sprint retrospective. It is about retrospecting on the process rather than the product. Therefore, number one would be correct. The team inspects the effectiveness of its interactions and processes. Increment adaptations, identifying them and document them is part of the sprint review. Number three, velocity is calculated to determine if it can be increased. That will be part of the sprint planning generally. 
Number four would be okay. Assumptions that cause customer dissatisfactions are discussed. And because in the sprint review, there may be feedback. And based on that, the assumptions may be discussed at the sprint retrospective. Therefore, the correct answer would be one and four, which is uh, option C. Next question number 27, which of the following best identifies inputs to the sprint retrospective event? A, customer dissatisfaction with the increment. B, velocity deviations over the last four sprints. C, problems encountered during the sprint execution. D, adaptations requested by customers in the sprint review. Once again, this is a retrospective question. So more about the process rather than the product. which means A cannot be the answer. It is about customers dissat with the increment or a product portion. Also D, which is adaptations requested by customers in the sprint review. They are part of the sprint review discussion and also the sprint planning meeting for the subsequent sprint. Option B, velocity deviations of the last four sprints may be discussed um, during the sprint and uh, Whereas problems encountered during the sprint review, a sprint execution that is, are quite significant to be discussed during the sprint retrospective. Therefore C would be the correct answer. Note that in this question and some of the previous questions, the key word in the question is best. While there may be a couple of options which may appear close to each other as the correct answer, we have to pick the best one. So in this case, for example, there may be some discussions about the velocity deviations in the last four sprint in a sprint retrospective, and that could be an input. Uh, the input um, could be the velocity of the previous sprints and a deviation chart, for example, which may be discussed. However, the main input would have to be the problems encountered during the execution based on which certain lessons may be learned and some improvements can be made. Question number 28, identify the missing words in the following sentence. The developers decide the structure for the daily scrum as long as something for the day's work is produced. An amended goal or a task list or an actionable plan or a burn down chart. It's about the structure of the daily scrum where it's about progress checking, a quick checkpoint at the same place and the same time every day during the sprint and during the project. And it's about the day's work being produced. So the goal of the sprint cannot be amended on a daily basis generally. The goal will remain the same. Therefore, it cannot be a... A task list will be defined uh, by the end of the sprint planning. So that also will not be changing, though some new tasks may be added or corrected as well on a daily basis. A burn down chart is updated on a daily basis, but the structure for the daily scrum will be decided by the developers as long as the actionable plan for the day's work is produced. So while the sprint goal, the tasks of the sprint and the bound down chart will be definitely considerations during the daily execution. However, the structure of the daily scrum will need to be connecting to the actionable plan because it's about what has happened so far and what's the goal for the next day and uh, are there any impediments to reach the goal and what is the confidence level to reach the goal. Therefore, actionable plan will be a must. Number 29, which of the following best describes the scrum board and its use? A, a visual representation of task planning and flow management. B, a visual means of controlling the number of product backlog items selected. C, a visual way to display the time allocation for each sprint backlog item. 
D, a visual display for the product owner to assign sprint tasks and user stories.